morning, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Not morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Kelly. <laughs> what the hell? Hello. All right, so hello. <laughs> chill it, chill it down a little okay. bit. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Kelly from Lockfire Knits, and this is episode. This might be episode forty. I didn't check before I came down. It's a knitting podcast <laughs> coming to you from Nova Scotia, Canada, and it is super sunny outside. Like literally, not a cloud. Is guy it's warm but not stinking hot like it's been perfect perfect so uh i'm really discombobulated today i talk with my hands i think more when i'm discombobulated anyway here's the deal i was going to podcast early this morning and then um usually my husband and my stepson go out somewhere but we've had my stepson for the last couple of weeks, and his mother was supposed to come home yesterday, but her flight got delayed, so we still had him today, which threw off the plan. So I said, okay, I'll go run my errands this morning, and then I'll come back and I'll podcast this afternoon. So I am literally just starting my errands. My husband says, well, we're going to go to the library, and then I'm going to drop him back off at his mother's place. So now I had to like throw everything up in the air that I had planned all out, I don't have my show notes written down. I'm flying by the seat of my pants, so here we go. Episode 40, off of the bang. So, yeah, and also to, to just make matters worse, like, worse, major allergies. So there's probably going to be a lot of breaks in here because nobody needs to see me blow my nose. Um, so today for the tea, I got my um, David's tea mug. And I've got my Tazo Passion Tea in it, which is still really hot. Okay, so let's jump into things because I don't know how much time I have before they get back. So I have one, two, I have four finished objects. I am a knitting machine. Uh, so we're going to start off. This one has been on the needles for a long time. It was a languishing whip. I think I actually started it last Christmas thinking I was going to do it for my sister-in-law for Christmas and then I just ran out of time. So it's basically, it's just, it's just a cowl. It's just like a really straightforward cowl. Um, and I, I have no idea the yarn because I lost the ball band a long time ago. I did like a two by two rib. And then when, and it's probably about, I don't know, what do you think? Two and a half, three inches long. And then I just went until I didn't feel like doing it anymore. And then on the bottom, I did the same thing, but just like maybe an inch. Um, and then what I did uh, is you might see it slightly I don't know if it'll show up. It's slightly wider at the bottom, uh, just so that you kind of could fit it. I thought, just do it that way. So you could kind of like drape it a little over your shoulders and tuck it in under your coat collar. But I loved the fall colors in this. I just thought they were so pretty. Um, but it's... I think it's probably, I don't even know like what what kind of yarn it is, but just from the feel of it, I'm saying 100% Merino Superwash. Um, I don't know if there's nylon in it or not, but there are some mistakes. You can kind of see like here and here and I think maybe here. I think I twisted the... Uh, or maybe at one point I dropped a stitch. I don't know. She's getting socks too, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so yeah, so that <laughs> that's off the needles. It's finished. Um, I still have a fair bit left. And when, it's just that they're all in one section. Like, I don't know what I was doing every time I got around to that section. That must have been after I finished the uh, 
the glass of wine. Maybe I'll just fold it this way when I give it to her. There. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so it was, the wool was pretty, felt kind of rustic um, and stiff. And then I blocked it out and it turned so super soft. So I don't even know if it was super washed. I have no idea. But that's uh, one off my needles. And this, uh, I'll show you, okay, I'll show you the socks I did, but I finished these. Ta -da. These, if you've been watching the podcast for a little while, you'll know I finished one, um, maybe six months ago ish. Um, and I just wasn't sure that they were for me. Although now that I see them knit up, I'm like, I really like them. They're so like psychedelic. But here's the thing. Um, my niece has, one of my nieces has the same size feet that I do. And she loves purple, like purple is her jam. So I already had one done. And because I've got my shoulder surgery, the first week of November, I'm really pressed for time to get my uh, Christmas knitting done. I thought, all right, uh, she likes purple. These fit her feet. I'll finish the other one. So I finished the other one. Ha ha. So much for second sock syndrome. I don't have time for second sock syndrome. So that's, I love these. This is Log House Cottage Yarns. And I don't think they named their colorway. So I really have no clue what this is. But oh my God, check it out. I just did the standard, the usual, you know, the eye partridge heel. You can see. So you see this little thing here? That's where <laughs> the stitch is from here. And I somehow managed to pick it up on that stitch. I had this one little split piece come out. Whatever. It's on your heel. You're not going to know. That's how you know it's handmade. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's my second finished object. Christmas gift number two. The second finished object is, I think I might have shown you the half finished version uh, last episode. I didn't even have time to kind of look at last episode and review what I did. So I'm hoping I don't duplicate anything. So I'm sorry if I do. I'm going to blame my husband. <laughs> Turn my schedule a letter whack. So these are the second pair of socks finished. I think I showed the first pair last week. So these are for my sister-in-law as well. This is the socks she's getting. Uh, these are from Lichen and Lace. Uh, and it's the, I think it's called the Painted Flowers. No, sorry, Pressed, pressed Flowers. I think that's it. In her 80-20 sock base. <laughs> I really, really love how these knit up. And now I'm kind of jealous that I gave them away <laughs> or I'm giving them away but I think I think this might be the ball of yarn where I had accidentally bought two because I thought I had bought the wildflowers and so I picked up the pressed flowers colorway and then I got home and realized it was no it was the pressed color flower way that I already had so i or it could have been the other way around I have two wildflowers and one pressed flower Anyway, they sell like it in lace at my local yarn store. Um, they usually have a good supply there. So I can get myself some more or I can buy it online. So second, third, third faux. I feel like I'm really rushing through this. What? I, oh, you know what? What I did for this one, I didn't drop stitches. I don't think I dropped stitches. But um, her feet are bigger. She's like a size, I think she's like a size eight or size nine. I think she might be a size nine. So she's got bigger feet. Um, tea break. Uh, 
So I was, um, and there's still like some give here at the toe. They're loose on the sock blockers. But because of that, I think I had used a little bit of the yarn for something else. I don't remember what. I might have started a shawl and then cut the yarn and then frogged the shawl. I don't remember. But <laughs> point being, I was playing a little bit of yarn chicken and I was worried because her feet are bigger that I was going to run out. So this is what I had left at the end. So what I did was I decided to make like the leg part a little longer and I'm glad I did because if I had like done it my usual length which I think is usually here I might have had enough but I would have been nervous the whole time I was <laughs> I was actually nervous when I started getting to the end I was like oh, I don't know I don't know I really don't know if I have a second ball there but it worked out worked out so and again it's just straight up vanilla socks I don't have time for my Christmas knitting given the limited amount of time that I have to actually delve into the um, pattern socks like I want mentioned last in this last episode so that two pairs <laughs> two pairs of finished socks cow that's like one person completely done, two people completely done. Okay, so I gotta find a place to set this that's not on the floor, because dog here. <laughs> also, I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys can tell. The lighting's a little different. I decided to splurge and get myself a couple of um, I don't even know what they're called, like photo lights or whatever. Because the light in here isn't the greatest and the sunlight from the windows is only here kind of like more in the early morning. So I thought it wasn't too expensive. I'm going to get a couple of the lights and they look great, I think. They look great from here. Like the light looks much better. So I'm hoping that it's, yeah. So if you notice the difference, that's why. So the other one, this is one I can't remember if I showed you, but I finished my modified BB scarf. I may have shown this. I was either done or completely done, but it's all blocked. And this is, I really love this. This is actually going to be for my brother-in-law. Um, he loves handmade gifts. My sister and her family all love getting handmade gifts. Like, they really, really appreciate it. So that's why I love kind of making them stuff for Christmas. But here is, and it blocked out really nicely. So it's got the kind of reddish, um, it looks a little more red. It's more of a burgundy red, but not a complete burgundy. It looks pretty close. Um, so I used that as my base color and then I did, I think I cast on 60 stitches and I just followed the Phoebe scarf pattern by um, uh, Jose Paquin and, but I didn't do it completely the same. I just basically striped all the way through alternating like the stripe color with the main color and I kept the main color. The same all the way through as opposed to um, switching it in the middle to the kind of second main color uh, and I thought this looked kind of you know like it's not my brother-in-law is kind of a big construct not constructing he's a carpenter um, which is a, is a form of constructing <laughs> but so I wanted to kind of keep the colors sort of in the more masculine vein which quite frankly I would wear this but and I'm not a guy last time I checked <laughs> but you know what I mean like I'm not gonna do them like pinks and yellows and you know although you know what he would probably still appreciate the fact that you made him something so anyway that I love this pattern I still I still have a lot of this yarn left I used the um the Broco Cucha, Cucha, I don't know how you say it because Spanish, but I have to say I love it. I think he'll really like this. I really think he will. 
and he's gonna this is gonna look really good on him too these colors will look really nice for him um, his his only issue may be trying to make sure that my sister doesn't steal it because <laughs> I didn't make her one <laughs> so He's getting this one. The larger one I made that I think I showed two episodes ago, that is, sorry, that's going to go to my mom for her, part of her Christmas gift. And yeah, that's, that's all I have done so far, I think. So that was it for finished objects. Um, so I really feel... Like, I'm on a tear. Um, that's my sock bag from the loop. The other thing that I got for my mom for Christmas, because my mom's the one that taught me how to knit, and growing up, she was... Find a place to put this. <laughs> she was a big knitter. Like, she made us lopey sweaters and, like, mittens and hats and scarves and all this good stuff and she actually managed a yarn store I don't know if I ever mentioned that but she managed a yarn store uh, when I was in junior high and high school so you know big knitter and then when we moved up here she I can't remember if she got into quilting before we moved up here when I graduated high school because I grew up in New Glasgow and then we moved up to um Halifax Dartmouth area, which is like about 90 minutes away, the summer I graduated high school. So it was around that time she started getting into quilting, and then she seemed to be doing more quilting, then she did knitting, um, and I've got, I don't have them down here because I keep them upstairs in the room, the bedrooms, but um, I have two of the quilts that she made me, and they're like amazing. Where's I going with that? Oh yes. Yeah. So anyway, about a year ago, she started doing these really thick um, wool scarves with basically using triple strands of yarn, and um, I think it was a two by two rib or a one by one rib. So the scarves were like this, and they were like really nice and thick. And that it was um, a project one of my sister's friends was doing. For, um, for the homeless, and it was like the scarves, and my mom also uh, knit hats, doing the same thing. So she was kind of getting back into her knitting. And kind of also around that time, I had offloaded on her a lot of my, um, a lot of my commercial yarn, because I needed, <laughs> I needed to make room for my midnight yarns. So I gave her a lot of my, um, Kind of wool yarn that I knew I wasn't going to use. I gave her pretty much almost all of my acrylic yarn um, and she started like you know getting into knitting again a bit more and then last Christmas I gave her I gave her one of these bags which is from the loop uh, which is my local um, yarn store and uh, Mimi the owner her mother uh, sews these up and they're I swear to god be, they're like the best bags ever so I gave my mom one that had bees on it because my mom loves anything with bees on it and I filled it up with I think I had two skeins or three skeins of my hand dyed yarn and I got her a really good pair of the Addy turbos and because she was just using like kind of old, the older ones I think it might have been the Susan Bates ones which you're doing kind of, I find that the ends are more blunted on those ones, and I wanted her to have like a really nice pair of really good needles. So I got her those, and then I gave her in the package the um, pattern to knit um, socks using the magic loop method. So it took her a surprisingly long time to master the magic loop because she had for her whole life used DPNs and I think she kept trying to figure out the magic loop as if it was the DPNs and she was just having trouble switching her brain off or from one and, and just letting go of that and just you know doing it the magic loop way. 
then somewhere along the line, something clicked in her brain and oh my God, I've created a monster. <laughs> I think she's out sock knitting me right now. So anyway, uh, I am like trying to keep her in yarn. So for Christmas for her, I said, you know, what do you want? And she's like, well, I want yarn. And then she found the sock head hat pattern the other day and or a couple weeks ago I guess but she didn't have the right size needles except for the older needles which was finding those kind of clunky to use for um, fingering weight yarn so I swung into the loop and I picked her up a pair of uh, they were all out of the Addies but I picked her up a pair of 16 inch knitter pro knitters pride ones um, so I'm going to drop those off to her this weekend. But, I mean, the woman is become a knitting machine again. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> what have I done? The good thing is I have her stocking this year because the adults in my family, we uh, we pick names at one Christmas to see whose sock you have to fill for the next Christmas. And I got my mom. So uh, I'm just, like, she's getting inundated. I went out today. And did I bring it down here? I don't think I did. No, I didn't. But I got her like a box at Michael's that's kind of all fall themed, which she loves. And it had like, I don't know why it had the letter S on it, but it had the letters S on it, which her name is Sharon. So that worked out well. <laughs> and then um, I picked her up two, they were like braids and it was like the Karen yarn but it was kind of done in braids and it was like I think they're called the Pantone colors I've never seen them before and I don't usually knit with acrylic yarn anymore but I was looking at all the different colors and they were really beautiful so I picked up a couple of those for mom uh, I'm going to uh, grab her some from my stash I'm also going to grab her some from my hand dyed yarns and um, I think that's and then I'm going to probably get her some more needles. I gave her my, was it Knit Pro? Knit Pro? It wasn't Knitter's Pride. It was, oh my God, I forget. It might have been the Symphony ones. And I can't remember who they belong to. But I had bought those. Uh, and then I bought my, I bought the, like, the interchangeable set. And then I bought my Chiagos, which are my favorite Chiagos are my go-to. So I thought, I'm not really using the, um, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> oh yeah, from the, yeah, why can't I find my needles when I need them? I don't know. Uh, so I gave her those, so she's got those, but I also want to get her um, some different sizes that weren't covered under there in the better needles. So I'm going to get her some of those. Uh, I'm going to make her up some stitch markers and just like, Give her all kinds of, and I might throw in some quilting stuff because she's still doing the quilting, and I realize I'm <laughs> no. Anyway, so I don't know. That was a tangent. We just went off there, people. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna get cracking. I actually did up a schedule in my bullet journal of what I have to have done at the end of each week. So this week, uh, <laughs> this weekend. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off or not because I just started these. Um, I have to have my nephew's socks done. Now, this is this. He picked out the yarn. There we go. From my my um, my hand dyed yarns. He saw that kind of sitting on my thing there. And so he picked out my... Summerberry Splash. He loved the green and the purple in it. So, oops, come back. Uh, so, anyway, here's how it's knitting up. This is the first sock. And I, oh my god, I love how this is knitting up. Like, get the pops of, there's like the blackberry and then the red is the strawberry and then the blueberries and then the green for the leaves. I just love, I love how this turned out. I may have to, I may have to steal from my stash and make myself some. 
So anyway, that's the first sock. And I started this, I think I started this yesterday. And then, no, I started the day before yesterday. It was today, Saturday. So I would have started on Thursday. And then I got the cuff knit. And then this is what I knit yesterday. Um, so he's got, he's got kind of bigger feet too. So I don't think I'm going to be able to knit finish the second sock by the end of the weekend, but we're going to do somebody with small feet next. Um, yeah, so I'll probably knit it to about here and then I'll start for the heel. Um, but yeah, I love that. So that's kind of one of my works in progress and between like trying to get everything ready for Christmas, I have not, I have not done any selfish knitting hardly at all. And I really don't have too many whips to show you. <laughs> so this will be a shorter episode this time. So that's my one, my first of two whips. And then, so I am going to at least, I'll definitely get one sock completed this weekend. And that's in my fringe supply bento bag. Ooh, ah. <laughs> so there we go. That's one, one in progress. And then my Tanya sweater, which my dog wanted some attention. So he was uh, chewing on my label. <laughs> This is, so this is the Tanya Sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks, I think this is the full name. And uh, I did make a little progress on this. Um, make sure I don't <laughs> drop any stitches. So, let's set that down there. I did finish. So this is the, I think this is the back, I think. Uh, so I finished the back up to the shoulders. But you can see I kind of, as I was putting it on this, I clearly went the wrong way. Um, so I don't know, let's see if I can do this. This will go. This is the length with it unblocked. Actually, I don't think I have it up high enough. I think this is probably where it's at unblocked and it's going to go down a bit. So it's probably going to hit, I think, I'm holding this up. I'm not holding this up high enough, but I think this is probably where it's going to hit once it's blocked. Um, now you can back up. <laughs> So I got done to the shoulders. So as I was doing the shoulders, <laughs> if anybody was watching my Instagram stories, which I totally forgot to say where to find me. So I'm going to just jam that back at the front <laughs> like I did last time. Um, then you'll know that, and I don't know that I did like a super stellar job on the wrap and turns because they're not really my forte. But in the pattern, it was just saying, it was telling you to wrap and turn. But at no point at that point was it saying um, to do, to go back and pick up the wraps, the wrap stitches. And I was like, well, I got to pick them up or it's just going to be this big gaping hole. Like, and I was re, so I read forward a little bit in the pattern, like kind of on the rows that, I was working on and I was like it's not saying anything here about picking them up and I thought maybe I'm reading that wrong um, and then I started confusing myself so anyways as it turned out as you went down and thank you so much for those of you who uh, DM'd me and let me know I was not losing my mind everything would be fine <laughs> so thank you all um, you do you do pick up the wrap stitches it's just um, several rows later kind of when you finish here then you go back and you pick them up like 
I didn't need to panic, but but I did. So that is that, and now I'm kind of on the doing the other side, and I'm about. I think I probably have another inch to knit before I start shaping for the shoulders. And here's the thing. So, and I'm knitting this with Ilmani. Il, Ilmani. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, this is the Ilmani Sabri line. And this is their organic cotton mixed with, I don't know, because I have my glasses on. I'm looking over there and I, I put all of my, I had to like move everything out of the way. I just like jammed. There's literally a mountain of project bags over there. It's embarrassing. 83% um, organic cotton and 15%, sorry, 85% organic cotton and 15% baby alpaca. La la, this is like one of the softest yarns I think I've ever knit with. I love it. So here's the thing. Um, the sleeve, let's see if I can find a bit of a, so uh, you can kind of see, get a sense here where the sleeve stops. So show there. So rather than kind of have that stop, because that's just not, that's not where I like my sleeves to kind of hit, I'm going to actually knit it, uh, and I got this idea from Rachel over at um, Knit Knit Abilities. Check out her podcast. She's got some great stuff on there. Um, I'll put the little, boo, place to go down here. <laughs> Uh, but she had it so that basically her sleeve came. I had blood tests. <laughs> I had blood tests. Now I'm all bruised. <laughs> That's attractive. Uh, to about there, which I like much better. So I'm actually going to put my sleeves down to the same length that she did because I think that's kind of a better, like a more flattering um, spot for me. And then that's, that's it. That's all there is to say on that one. I would love to get this done before my surgery. Um, I don't know if I will. And I was thinking, I don't know how soon after my surgery I'm going to be able to knit. I know it's definitely not going to be in the first month. So that sort of cuts out the entire month of November. Um, for the month of November, I'm not going to really be able to do much of anything. Um, which is annoying because I'm right-handed and so I'm not even going to be able to cut my food. <laughs> um, but I would, I really would like to finish that. And if I can at least get it done so I'm on the sleeves, then I think that will be a much easier because it's just, I've got the, I've got nine and I also have a pair of, 12 inch needles. So I can kind of do this without really activating the shoulder. So I should be okay. I'm really hoping I'm okay, especially if I don't um, get all my Christmas knitting done before Christmas. I mean, I think I'll get a pass if I don't, if I tell them it's coming. But here's what we got. Here's how it looks so far. Sorry, I'm covering my mouth. Um, I really like it. There have been times where I've wanted to frog it, mostly during the lace section, but I'm glad I didn't. And I love, I love the Sharon. Um, I think I picked up some more for myself too, for another sweater. And I think it was, I'm going to do the Rachel sweater with that, that one that was um, uh, Jose Paquin's pattern. So that's all my whips. I mean, that's all the whips I'm working on. I've got like the whole mountain over there um, of stuff that I haven't gotten to yet. I haven't gotten the Gramps Revive uh, cast on. I was going to, and then I thought, you know what? Uh, you do not have time and you can't afford the distraction right now. So, simmer down. Um, so that really, that's all the knitting. 
That's all the knitting. Um, I do have, so up next, I already had a skein of this, um, but I got one to do for my nephew, and I got this one because my brothers said his kids just like, you know, like black or brown socks. Other than his niece who's getting the, or his daughter, my niece, who's getting the like hyper crazy purple socks. Um, but if, I'm not, I'm not going to knit plain black socks. I'm just not going to do it. But this is the Evie Knits self-striping and it's kind of, um, I think it's, she calls it her charcoal. Oh no, it's called Bailey the Tabby Cat. Um, I'm trying to read what it says here. Who am I kidding? So she's got, <laughs> she's got written on it. Bailey the Tabby Cat is the colorway. Um, the stripes are black, white, light gray, and white. So that's going to be fun. I love doing self-striping. I do. So that's going to be a fun one to do. And then this one is going to be fun. This is Loghouse Cut Yarns, and I love their, I love their uh, yarns. So this is all like gray with like black speckles. So if you're going to be getting like black socks, it's not going to be born black. So that's going to be for those two nephews. Um, I had one. Oh, this is all gonna, this is all gonna go tumbling down. Um, my niece, see there's the one I'm keeping for myself. <laughs> my, this is my husband's, so he's gonna be getting those ones. He probably will get the dog here with it because he's used to that. Um, now my other, see, see my niece that's getting the electrified socks. She would probably have loved this, but you know what? I'm going to give this to my other niece because I think she likes purple as well. And then I've got green, which... <laughs> the green I was going to do for my, uh, for my brother-in-law but he's getting the scarf instead because he has gargantuan feet. I mean, he's like size 12 or something. I didn't even know if I'd have enough yarn to do two gargantuan feet. So what I'm going to do is I think I might, I might hang on to that just in case I can. And then I have to find, oh, um, my youngest nephew, Gabe, uh, is a huge, huge animal lover. And he likes to tease me about my incredible fear of sharks. So I am going to do his, his socks in Shark Week, which is one of my colorways. Hang on. So this is my, this was my first go at the Shark Week colorway. Uh, the one I finally landed with is a little, uh, has more blue in it, but I'm going to give him my original. So it's basically kind of like Caribbean seas and then, you know, blood, <laughs> blood and jump. That's so disgusting. <laughs> so there, that's, that's what he gets for mocking me. He's going to get shark week. Um, yeah, so I think I've got, it all picked out, except for my mom. I haven't picked out hers yet. Um, I don't know what I'll do with her yet. I don't know. What am I going to do with you, ma? Ma? Mom likes yellow, but I find, I'm thinking yellow socks that might get, they might get kind of grungy. So I might do, I might do that one for her. What's the purple going on? Anyway. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's what's going on. So the other, what else has been going on? I did do 
some dyeing. Uh, so we had a shop update last weekend. So those are in the shop now and there's also some other uh, other ones that are in there and I think that's pretty much it that's it for shop news uh, I am hoping I got bit by a mosquito what the heck I'm hoping to do another shop update I just honestly I got bit by a mosquito <laughs> what's up with that um, so yeah next shop update is going to be I'm gonna say maybe maybe I might do it the first of November um, and then just between now and then because I can't do big batches because my shoulder just won't kind of support that um, so and then we have I have a week of the first week of October off I'm gonna be scratching my legs like crazy um, for vacation <laughs> take, take a vacation before I go and leave <laughs> whatever earned it. <laughs> uh, that's our anniversary week so I think we're probably going to be doing some day trips. We're going to go down to the summer house but apparently my father-in-law is staying there until I don't know whenever. Um, so we're just I guess going to do some day trips. I don't really go anywhere <laughs> like we planned. Um, yeah, so, but I should have some time that week to do some dyeing and uh, a couple weekends between now and then. And yeah, so that's about it for the shop update. I'll probably have a couple of Halloween colorways coming and one, I have one other Christmas colorway planned and I may do another one as well. So, that being said, I think that's everything looking around thinking I feel like I'm forgetting something this is gonna be a shorter episode I'm looking at the time uh, life stuff um, it's not too much going on we um, we've got our anniversary coming up October 1st so that'll be our seven year anniversary I think I remember the day I don't always remember how many years it's been I think it's seven I think it's seven. Yeah. Around there. Seven. Seven sounds good. Lucky seven. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I'm just waiting on the surgery, which is November 7th. And then after that, I'm probably going to be off, week, uh, off work for the month of November. Um, because I can't drive and getting any jostled in any kind of way is probably going to be really painful and could kind of ruin what they did. I have to kind of basically keep it, um, stationary, you know, immobile, immobilized. <laughs> That's the word. Um, so that I don't like rip. I guess what all the work that they've done and it's really easy because your shoulder joint is one of the it, I think it's your most mobile joint in your body um, your shoulder and your ankle so it's really easy if you don't keep it still to kind of rip all the work that they did and I don't want to do it twice so um, so yeah so I can't and also I'm right-handed so I literally can't use my hand for a month 
except for to do the exercises he gives me. Uh, so yeah, so that's about it. That's, uh, we're just kind of kicking back and I'm probably going to Netflix binge since I can't knit on the month that I'm off. So if you guys have any, uh, Netflix shows that I should check out, just put it down in the, uh, in the little space down below because I'm going to be, it's almost like there's going to be so many, I'm not going to know which ones to choose. So that's about it. I think that's everything. I am going to cut this off here before I start to babble and I am going to go work on my sock knitting and wait for my husband to get home from wherever it was he went. <laughs> and then I think we're probably do, doing something for the afternoon since we now have a child free weekend. Yay! So I will see you guys in two weeks time when I am off, well, off work, um, and immobile and unable to knit. I'm going to attempt to still podcast. I may have to get my husband to set this up, <laughs> but um, I may still podcast. I won't have any knitting to show you, but um, I'm thinking up some other ideas of things that I can talk about. And they'll probably be shorter episodes, but I'm probably going to be so starved for something to do that I would love. <laughs> and I don't like the idea of not podcasting. I really enjoy it. Um, I love checking in with you guys every week. So, um, yeah, so I will probably keep podcasting. So I'm going to try it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do Vlogmas this year or not, um, just because I just, I don't know if, if I'll be able to, and kind of trying to do that every day might, might be a bit much. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I might just do it weekly or something like that. I don't know. A little summary. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to let you guys go. So, uh, thank you to all the new and returning viewers, which I forgot to say at the beginning, so I'm going to just double that up and say thank you twice as much. Um, and to all the new and returning subscribers, thanks so much. I love that you guys come in here and uh, every couple of weeks and check out what we're doing, what we're doing, like I've cloned myself. <gasps> if I could clone myself, I'd get those socks done in no time. Science. <laughs> anyway. This is a clear indication I should be finishing up. Um, so thank you guys so much for, for stopping by. Um, please hit the thumbs up button. That really helps get the word out about the podcast and uh, spreads the word and gets some more people coming to our uh, group here. Um, there's the Ravelry group. Don't forget to check it out. Uh, there's an Ask Me Anything thread in the, uh, in the Ravelry group as well. So if you get any questions about whatever, it doesn't have to be knitting related, throw them in there and I'll check them out and uh, answer them on the podcast. And I think that's about it. So until next time, have a good weekend, everybody. I'll see you later and happy knitting.